Chances are you already love someone autistic, but many of us go undiagnosed. I want to unmask. I want to sit here in this pink light and be myself for you. But I hope you don't mind if I do this over the phone. I need some type of barrier even though I'm in this room alone. Filming this on the phone like the one you'll see this on. I know my words can sound like poetry, but I text better than I speak, so bear with me. I'm that autistic black man and welcome to my channel where I help you relate to your autistic black man. I haven't been this vulnerable in such an open space, but it's essential to share what autism looks like. Pun on that look like, because you know, you see where we're, you see the setting, right? As an adult, so other black men and the people who love us know we exist. We're your uncles, brothers, cousins, husbands, neighbors, colleagues, and friends. Sit and let me rap to you for a minute as a black man diagnosed later in life. The definition. definition. Autism or ASD encompasses a range of conditions marked by difficulties in social skills, repetitive behaviors, speech, and nonverbal communication. It affects around 1 in 36 children in the U.S. with diverse subtypes shaped by genetic and environmental factors. As a spectrum disorder, individuals exhibit unique strengths and challenges in learning, thinking, and problem solving, varying from highly skilled to severely challenged. Support needs differ from significant assistance to independent living. Autism development is influenced by multiple factors, often accompanied by sensory sensitivities, medical conditions like GI disorders and seizures, as well as mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. Diagnosis typically occur by age 3 and sometimes even as early as 18 months. Early intervention enhances future outcomes. Now I fall into the group of those with low support needs that are high masking, meaning with efforts and practice, I'm able to assimilate. Code switching is an example of a masking technique. Do you have a code switch for you now? Hell no! Let me share a few of my quirks related to ASD. ADHD and depression and how they show up in me. We're gonna skate to one song, one song only. My day-to-day -day requires loose planning that doesn't divert from the routine much. And when it does, I study every new addition until it feels less anxious to me. The moment I step outside is like a new episode to follow that distraction. My brain plays connect the dots with patterns while the world teases my focus like a carnival game. I work out twice a day and have a rotation of meals that are usually the same every week. Marinara Mondays, Taco Tuesday, White Castle Wednesdays, pizza on the weekends, and a lot of chicken and rice somewhere in between there. I have trust issues with food. No thanks, I already ate. My palate is like Inspector Gadget's closet. The list of things I'll eat is shorter than the things I won't. I'll try new things to be polite, but there are certain foods that I can't stand due to their texture. You should know that my son has extremely delicate digestion. Some days veggies are fine. Other days coffee upsets my stomach. You ever get on the escalator behind someone who just stops at the end like it doesn't keep moving? I'm a master of awkward pauses. My brain is like that person. My mind races on different subjects while trying to filter out what I don't need. I tend to catch what others miss like a detective spy and clues in a whodunit film. My brain's like a hip hop head with R&B roots. I can make out the slightest sample and catch metaphors like Velcro, but sometimes get lost in the beat. These pauses may seem awkward, but it's just my brain working in overdrive. Some people overeat, others overdrink. But I overthink, which comes from my oversharing. I could talk your ear off about random issues. It's like my brain's a crate of albums ready to be sampled. Like our planet being the only one that doesn't have a name for its moon. But small talk, I'm like a comedian with stage fright. The off the stage. I overthink and analyze conversations for days after they've happened, thinking what could I have said differently, especially if I'm left on red. I'm the opposite of my family when it comes to texting. They come across as flat and as monotone as I seem in person, but I'm more expressive in text. I mean, I write music, so that checks out. Getting those words to leave my brain out of my mouth literally is like rehearsing a song before recording it, but in real time, so there's no retake after the words leap out. They tend to come with extra than if I had just sent a text. I text with emojis so my tone isn't misunderstood. And speaking of family, loud noises make me uncomfortable. Family gatherings where it gets too loud make my heart race. The excitement with black people in spades. Shouting at the TV with whatever sports game is in season and throwing a controller when the game cheats? No, sir. The cookouts and the group birthday dinners make me anxious because. Only plan for what's on the I'm not splitting the beer, Charlie. You got lamb chop, you got steak. My name is Bumblebee. My brain is like Bumblebee from Transformers. I'm remixing your sentences with movie quotes and songs and commercials in my head. Sometimes it's funny and you might just catch me laughing out loud. I feel at ease with my headphones to filter out the world. When I'm alone away from home, I'm listening to music to filter out other people's conversations. I have enough going on in my head and distractions are the exact reasons for me putting off today what I put off yesterday until tomorrow. My eyes work just fine and I'm all about the details like a Virgo noticing a new phone in the background of the photo you just sent. My head's on a swivel when I'm outside. I control the music, I set the vibe, don't touch me. 
unwanted touch is uncomfortable. I have to let my guard down to be touched. So anyone just grabbing me or touching me sends a level of rage over me. A bear hug from my husband feels like compression workout clothes. It's comforting. I can't stand my feet covered for too long, but when I'm in public, I'm usually stemming with my toes spreading them out like a cat. And speaking of toes, if I'm not focusing on how I'm walking or if I'm by myself, I tend to walk on the front of my foot. Sometimes I'll tap my fingers like I'm playing a cymbal. When I'm anxious or stressed, I pick my skin, usually the top of my head or the bottom of my feet. These can tend to be painful because I can go too far, but the repetition and the, the feeling in itself is very soothing. Oh, and I ground my teeth. And many of these stress-related stems came later in life as a result of me masking. I don't mind being alone. In fact, sometimes it's a relief, but that's what scares me the most as a married man. What if my alone time becomes my only time? I'm not big on socializing, so I do whatever I can to avoid it. If I'm shopping, I'll use self-checkout and I pray I won't need assistance. I rehearse conversations that I might have when I go out in public because I battle with not liking people to needing human interaction. Socializing can be scary because it's unpredictable no matter how much I rehearse for it. Let me go in and check on you. Goddamn garbanzo beans. I'm often misunderstood and come across rude with how my first mind wants to act. For example, if I invented Google, I'd probably call it WTF because every time I want to search something, what the fuck are garbanzo beans? My brain fills in the WTF. I usually have to edit what I text a few times before I send it because my directness can be abrasive. My facial expressions can be misleading. You might think I'm plotting something when I'm just really trying to figure out where I know this melody that's been stuck in my head for the past hour. I can recognize a songwriter's pen instantly, but then there's times like today when I just realized Tedra Moses wrote Dip It Low, and she's also singing on the background vocals. It's clear as bright, but I'm just now hearing it. I miss social cues and I tell the truth when a lie would be better for everyone. I had a guy ask me if my best friend was playing him for his money. I told him it wasn't his face of the conversation. My best friend exact words to me in private. Meanwhile, you probably would have known to protect your friend and say nah. Making eye contact feels like holding your hand under a faucet. It's uncomfortable, and the longer I try, the hotter it gets. At times, I find myself humming to soothe my soul when my memory bank decides to do its own iPod shuffle. Don't wanna lose my focus. I'm not gifted. I don't operate on the genius level, but when I'm interested in something, I lock in like a booted double park car on a Sunday. I will research everything about it. For instance, when I wanted to know what does Pharrell use to make music, I learned to produce music because I wanted to know how my favorite producer made music in hopes I'd learn how to use the same equipment. Today, I'm self-taught on that same keyboard. Okay, it's a workstation, but the general public that's not into music production would probably think that I'm talking about some type of desk. That's why I said keyboard, but the nerd in me wouldn't let me go any further without addressing that. When I'm focused, I can practice for hours, forgetting to eat at times. When I meet another person I can talk music with, I'm like a hype man at a concert. What? Try my best not to be puff all up in your video. Even the sun goes down. The nighttime can be tough for anyone, but for me, it's like facing a storm of emotions without an umbrella. That's when I start reflecting on what I've accomplished for the day. And if it's not what my brain is telling me is good enough, I feel low. I call these moments the 90s. I have bad thoughts thinking that the world wouldn't lose anything in my absence. Before I knew I was autistic, I would question why I was crying. When everything in life seemed to be going well. I'm married, I'm loved, my needs are met. So why does waking up every day feel like I've just returned to my body after exploring from a different space? It's like the opening scene from a sci-fi film, but instead of some cool alien sh it's just me feeling lost in my own skin that's why my routines are important for my mental health I hate when I have a meltdown in front of others. They don't get it. I can't explain it while it's happening and the questions aren't helping. It was 6 a.m. before I even had coffee. Barely had time to piss. When everything that could irritate the shit out of me decides to turn it up a notch. Like, what's well, really good? The neighbor clanging a glass bowl signaling that it's Oscar's meal time at 6 fucking a.m. My own impatient kid begging for his tuna entree. Then bullying his big brother for his as the second portion. Add to that the infant below us crying at 5.30 and I'm barely awake. And the triggers are unpredictable. But this morning, it was a perfect mix. The constant yapping pushing my patience to the edge, and I'm just four or five seconds from serving that damn canned fish. The emotion surged like a tidal wave, overwhelming me all at once, pushing me to a one-two snap. I'm yelling, now waking my husband up in a panic. Both cats hiding from me, not eating the food they just begged four minutes ago, leaving me to feel like sh some days they linger like a hangover, while others they're out of here faster than a person that owes you money. Don't ask me what's wrong. I've asked myself what's wrong, and I don't know. Ask if I need anything, if you really mean it. 
Getting diagnosed at 42 was an emotional roller coaster, but my life has been one big adventure. Now that I have a name for my quirks, I can be nicer to myself and embrace neurodiversity. I can humble the voice that says I'm the sh and I can try to ignore the one that says I should quit. But let's keep it a buck. I sometimes feel like a burden, especially when I share my feelings with others. I promise myself I won't dump on them again, but I'm like a broken record. I find myself doing it again and again. But it's okay to be the weird uncle or the cousin that's a little off or that flighty nephew. That's just a part of who I am. And I'm learning and growing, embracing all of who I am in this crazy neurotypical world. That's what it's all about. Life's a journey of self-discovery. And I might have been the last one to get the memo, but hey, better late than never, right? I'm embracing my quirks like a pastor with the collection plate. So hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this sermon and the spirit so moves you to do so. Hit that like button so Al Gore knows to let his rhythm know that other people with similar interests need to see this. I love to hear your own quirky adventures. Share your stories in the comments below. The conversation's just getting started, but I'm gonna call you back later so we can talk about